old folks. Old folks smell your lie before it comes into your mouth. They can hug you and see what's inside your womb. They are younger than young folks because they have stared down time and won. The hands of old folks are plump like sausages, skinny like the birch branch stripped of leaves my grandmother whirled to whip away my sass. Story scarred hands that grabbed for the sun and missed, held the breath of returned spirits, have clapped sorrow, sin, and joy. Old folks can't stand your noise because it interferes with the whispers from friends no longer here. Their laugh is seasoned with the mystery of memory. Old folks' days are not numbered. The days of the young are numbered. And I want to do maybe a collection called Things They Didn't Tell Us About Getting Old. And this is one of them, and it's called Indecent Hair. <laughs> Hair. They creep up on you, silent, strong, willful villains, lean and long. When they make snow on your lip, let your fingers slip cream into their core. You arch your brow and one plants a flag, pull it in the direction it grows, evict it ever so fast. When more attack your lovely chin, rip at the root, ah, but they will come again. <laughs> but when white hair stands supreme where no decent gray one would go, in places even God has not seen, below, ah, all you can do is scream. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. The war for land, the war for resources, the war for empire. Dividing lines mark the earth, but sever the bodies. Walls build themselves before the concrete is spun. The war for power, the war for revenge. For race purity, purity, purity. Death, elevated now like a rising stock, its wand of chemicals more valuable than its slice by bullet, blade, bomb. A death contest sponsored by rules of war, blistered blood versus nerves jangled into silence. The war for gods, the war for minds, the war for liberty. Too many wounds from benign neglect. Who recovers with posthumous band-aids? The war for, the war for, the war for peace. I'm going to put you to work a little bit on this one. Uh, it's a piece I was writing for the families of uh, people who have been murdered by the police, and it's called Still Here. <clears throat> So when I point to you, that's your line. <laughs> say her name, say Sandra Bland. Say Sandra Bland. Say Sandra Bland. <laughs> We're gonna do that one more time, okay. Say her name, say Sandra Bland. Say Sandra Bland. Her mother, say mother still here, making radical ways from memories, my hands manicured in protest paint, turning loss into legacy. Say her name, say Joyce, say Joyce. Say Cornell, say Cornell. Say son, son still here. 911 words meant to save her life, now my beatbox of regret. Say her name, say Michelle. Michelle. Say Cousseau. Cousseau. Say Michelle, say niece, still here. Memory of being three, peeping on tiptoe into the casket, learning gone without goodbye. 
Say her name. Say Kayla. Kayla. Say more. More. Say Kayla. Say father. Father still here. Finger on humanity's trigger. Challenging police policy on restraint for souls wrestling with the divine. Say her name. Say Sarah. Sarah. Say Reed. Reed. Say Sarah. Say mother still here surrounding myself with mirrors to remember that I am more than the mother of. Like a memorized poem, I am still here. In the kitchen, making cornbread with fresh tears. In the courtroom, waiting for legal hand-me-downs. At the table, bending the death is expensive bills. I am still here in the stacked newspapers that supported the lie. In the camera's eye, as if I had pulled the trigger. I am still here, afraid to change lanes even when walking negotiating prison reform as the warden keys jangle hungry for the next sister woman. I am here, standing my ground, choosing morning over morning. Say her name. Say mine, still here. Say mine, still here. Still here, still here, still here. My great-grandfather was Mason O'Garner, and this is a part of the obituary that was in the newspaper. At 87, Mason O'Garner refused to retire. He was still working as custodian of the Parkside Apartments when he died Sunday. He had held the job for 25 years. Until three years ago, he also worked as a part-time guard. Music was one of Mr. Garner's lifelong interests. In earlier years, he taught wind instruments and played in church and fraternal orchestras. He had been a member of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church for 60 years. Some of that information I did not learn until after my papa died. This is Papa's poem. In the hour of ghosts, they bring the story. Went with your boots on just as you intended. One sharp breath, a spark in the dark, the full goodbye. Then I was too much 19, skipping the annual picnic, the baseball game you referee, your lessons on slap and hand bone. Friends see a meteor. I see a spirit leaving. Wish it good joy and good journey, not knowing it belongs to me. We are joined at the hip, so how can I not feel you streaking across the sky, wrapped in my last hug? Now I am the family elder, poet and word worker, memory reaper, sacredness keeper, who has not written your poem. We grew memories together. Sundays after church, we shared another world. You in fresh overalls, me in dainty pinafore, knowing each thick wood door played my piano lesson for delicate pale ladies in lace collars who slipped dimes in my palm as we delivered the glass bottle milk. We dispensed the Sunday newspaper, hauled the trash outside. We stoked the coal in the basement furnace, neon orange sparks flirting with my fascination. Driving to your brothers through the high, so high Blue Ridge, really on a ridge mountains, at 12, your chaperone, Maps in my lap, no AAA card required. At the track, we skipped the stands, stood in the dust at the fence where your keen eye focused mine to pick the winning harnessed horse, our take rich from dime and nickel bets between us. You taught me to shoot pool, my breaking shot as zigzagged as my thick braids. Trained me to parallel park with the same angles used for a drop to the side pocket. Saturday fashion shows and sterling silver Sabbath teas, me prancing and twirling, you the one quiet spot among tinkling lemon. At 81, you pulled out your cornet for me, pushed your lungs to fill the bell with carols, the tentative bow of my viola duetting each sacred note to your spit, blending mama and nana's tears. Women three generations tight, grateful to know the gravel in your laugh. You, my great and grand and father, so much father, who never talked about slavery or loss 
or being widowed or married or aches, pains, tensions. We are joined at the heart. So I felt you riding blue velvet twilight, went with your boots on just as you intended. This is your poem, Papa. So long in coming, too short the song, your breath, your breath still singing in my wings. And I'm going to close with a short piece. It is one of those mornings. The crunch of steel meets the missing stop sign. Man's time relives one hour. Exhausted children weep. Avoid, run, search. <laughs> we find each other, sit barefoot on the dew, rocking together, me and mourning, old souls, the only women in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.